Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar from North Door and Risk Exchange entitled Cyber Risk Assessment of the UK Insurance Industry for 2021. So this is an exercise we carried out recently to assess the risk posture to cyber across the industry and it's a selection of carriers, brokers and cover holders. Do the next slide, Darren. So 12 months ago, um, the world was a very different place, but 12 months ago, we carried out the same exercise. So we did the assessment for cyber across the UK insurance industry, a selection of um, carriers, brokers, and cover holders again. And um, so a year on, we've done it again. And uh, in that time, we'll see a lot's changed. So now the working practices are all remote, we're all working remotely. Um, Digital practices have accelerated massively. Cyber criminals are much more active. And uh, the manage management of cyber risk in, in the insurance industry is, is more important than ever. So, so it'll be a very uh, interesting and timely moment to do the report again. Um, everyone who attends today will get a copy of the report. So I'll be sending that out to you. You'll also get a summary of the cyber risk posture for your organization. So. We would uh, hope you get some very useful information out of it to benchmark yourself against the industry and your peers, and also have an understanding of the, uh, the posture in your own organization as well. Um, so how this is going to work, we have an hour scheduled. We're, we probably won't use all of that because the presentation will take about half an hour. Um, if you want to submit questions during the presentation, that's fine. You'll either see a chat button or, or a Q&A button. If you have a Q&A button, then use that. Otherwise you can use the chat, depends which version of the Zoom you have. If you submit those questions during the presentation, then we'll answer them at the end. So some intros, um, Richard Jeffries, that's me, North Door, client manager covering insurance. And uh, Darren Craig, you can see is a risk exchange of senior risk exchange to the platform and our partner that we use to um, run this, this um, cyber risk assessment. Some of you will know North Door, some of you are clients of ours. Um, if you don't know North Door, we've been around for nearly 30 years, focused on, we started out focused on the London insurance market and that's still a big focus for us. And we have a suite of applications that are targeted that market to cover core insurance processes like underwriting and risk and compliance. And um, at our core, our edge solutions focus around data. So just making sure that you have a very efficient and protected data estate that you can get a lot of uh, valuable analysis out of. And risk exchange is um, part of our solution portfolio that we use for our clients to help them manage their risk posture internally and also with their supply chain. So that's, that's us. Um, so now I'll Move on to what you're all here for. So um, I'll hand over to you, Darren. Thanks, Richard. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Richard said, my name is Darren Craig, the CEO of Risk Exchange. So I have the pleasure of taking you through uh, the, the data this morning or some sort of highlights, I guess, from the data from the uh, recent assessment we carried out. Um, there is, there will be more data in the report itself. Um, just quickly, Risk Exchange is a, is a, a platform um, which allows companies to manage, uh, and monitor, and, and remediate uh, uh, risk, or cyber risk, uh, particularly, and compliance risk around not only your own organisation but also your uh, third party or your supply chain or our partners. Um, and it does this by uh, carrying out uh, continuous data data collection across uh, external footprints of companies. Um, and then reports this information back in a very, very easy to understand score and, and grades, uh, along with the technical data, if that's a requirement. So the score itself, just to give you a, a bit of an idea how, how it's broken down. Um, so the, the score is, is sort of weighted. It, it runs from 300 right up to, uh, to 900. Um, and it's weighted across a number of different areas like application security, um, network security, uh, uh, encryption, for example, email security. So there's, a, there's about 10 different domains it's, it's weighted across. And those weightings uh, vary <clears throat> um, depending on what we're seeing in, in the market effectively or what we're seeing 
you know, how companies are being attacked. So if the, if the, if the uh, companies are being attacked through maybe phishing attacks or email type attacks, then we'll adjust our weighting to, to allow for that. Um, and this recalibration takes, takes place every, every quarter. So the, so the score you're seeing is, is, you know, is, is, is taking into account what we're seeing out on the market. Um, it's then broken down into a number of target areas and, and each of these target areas are given a, a grade uh, from, from F to A. Um, the important thing to note here is that the score itself um, is extremely important because it, it gives us an indication and you an indication of how uh, susceptible you are to a breach based on the information we find. Um, and if the score is running, you know, somewhere less, 500 or less, <clears throat> then you're at a, a high risk effectively of suffering some sort of security breach uh, over the next, next 12 months. And we see, we've seen this collaborated a number of times through, through some of the high, high profile breaches we've seen over the last two years. So the, the important thing is here to, um, if you have a low score to try and uh, improve that score and get it up to at least um, 700, high 700s. <clears throat> um, but if it's, if it's uh, you know, if it's, the key thing is to maintain it, I guess. Um, it can be one thing to get it up to that number, but the hard bit is, is trying to maintain it. So some of the highlights, the report itself. <clears throat> so um, we carried out a, a sample set of, of companies, or approximately 150 organizations across the insurance sector covering uh, brokers, uh, carriers, cover holders. Um, and we uh, took a sample set of that data over, over a period of, of six months. And unfortunately, it has uh, shown that there is still a number of weaknesses within, within this, the insurance industry, uh, particularly the Lloyd's insurance market really is what we're, we're covering here. Um, and for us, it really highlights the fact that the organizations that we surveyed really need to go back to basics in some ways. Some of the things that we have identified um, are really you know, basic operat security operational issues. And really, I think it's uh, some cases, it's a case of companies aren't really looking at their external security posture as much as maybe they should, uh, or they maybe have weak uh, security operations. But digging into some of the detail then, you know, a large proportion of the companies that we surveyed um, still have not implemented uh, DMARC, which is a, a you know, a, a, a authentication protocol used for securing email. And effectively, it leaves these organizations open to uh, phishing attacks. <clears throat> and as we know, phishing attacks are very, very common nowadays. You know, 98% uh, of breaches actually start with some form of uh, email phishing attack. Um, the other worrying thing is a lot of organizations are uh, collecting uh, data via their websites uh, with very, very poor um, encryption methods or out of date encryption methods, with the, which has been proven not to secure the data. So there's confidentiality risk there and integrity risk of that data. And at the same time, it's also putting the firms in question at risk of a GDPR fine because they're, they're not meeting the, the requirements of GDPR. Um, digging into the brokers themselves, um, so the score is slightly slightly down um, uh, from what it was, but um, some firms, you know, the mix has changed definitely, um, and, and one firm has, has achieved a score of eight eight forty seven, which is which is pretty good, um, and we'll we'll dig into the broker detail in a bit, in a, a, bit a minute or two. Um, then moving on to the uh, cover holders. Um, so again, a uh, bit of a change in the mix here, um, but the highest achieving uh, cover holder firm we looked at um, achieved a score of 810, which is very good. Um, and the carriers themselves, again, surprisingly, these, these are large firms uh, with large budgets when it comes to security, um, and they're not really achieving the, the, the high score levels we, we would, I guess, expect from these types of companies. Um, you know, coming in around the, the high sort of 700s. Now this year we um, have included service providers because as everyone on the call knows, there has been a number of uh, breaches uh, across service providers uh, within the insurance industry. Um, and so this year we've included uh, the data from those service providers as well, which is, which is interesting to look at. Um, and then the final point on this really is that um, looking at resilience across the insurance industry, 
um, there's a high proportion, uh, it's over 50% of firms now using Office 365. And this really highlights uh, not necessarily a security risk, um, but a, a resilience risk within the insurance industry. And if, you know, if there was some sort of outage or a security event within some of these firms that are providing uh, most of the firm's uh, services, then you know, they're at high risk of, of, of uh, an impact. So looking at the score, just to start off with, um, the scores themselves you can see here. So the, you know, nobody's, you know, on average, nobody's really getting up to the to the 800s. Um, but we can see here brokers are, are well down in the 750s. Um, some ways, not surprising a little bit, you know, the, these firms have, uh, have huge security budgets. They maybe don't have a security team. They're maybe relying on, on uh, third parties to look after some of their security. And, but again, what this highlights to us is that the, Security operations really is not getting the focus that it should, based on based on the findings we've seen from uh, from our data. Um, again, cover holders, you know, there's a mix of size of uh, firms in, in that. Some are small, some are larger, and um, but again, um, lack of uh, are weak. I guess security operations is how to, uh, dragging that their their average score down. Um, we can see an improvement, obviously, in in carriers and service providers, um, but again. If you look at service providers, for example, compared to other companies of a similar nature, um, you know, maybe outside of insurance, uh, they're, they're falling well below uh, the benchmark, which is sort of early, early at hundreds. Now getting into the, the brokers themselves. Um, so some of the key points here to note is that um, 50, 54% of brokers scored a D when it came to email security. And really, this is this is more of a misconfiguration challenge. Um, you know, they're not having implemented uh, DMARC, and this is putting their firms at risk of a phishing attack. So again, it's it's really some it's a, an attack waiting to happen, really. Um, and it's 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 as I said earlier, it's, it's sort of the prime attack vector nowadays. So it's it's an important one to try and uh, resolve. Um, and 54% uh, of the population is a, is a worrying worrying number. 35% of the brokers scored a C when it came to the encryption. And again, this comes to, um, you know, using weak encryption methods. In some cases, no encryption whatsoever, um, which is extremely worrying. You know, we've seen examples of firms collecting uh, personal data from, from applications, for example, for insurance uh, with no encryption. We've seen uh, examples of firms collecting or asking someone to log in with a username and password. Um, and it doesn't have any form of encryption on that form whatsoever. So this is this is very very worrying to see this. But again, it's something that you know, going back to the back to basics, um, it's something that really can be so resolved very very quickly. Um, and you know, it really doesn't take um, a lot of effort or investment to to resolve it. But I think it comes from the fact that there's there's maybe not a lot of focus um, on this part of the, part of the infrastructure. Um, so again, just touching on the a large population of the brokers are using Office 365. Um, so again, that's, that highlights a potential resilience issue. Um, and looking at some of the detailed security vulnerabilities within the population, we, we identified uh, some very, very high risk security vulnerabilities, which are de the details are detailed in the report itself. Um, but 20% of the population that we surveyed um, had the same uh, security vulnerabilities. Um, some of these vulnerabilities have been in play since 2010. Um, a lot of them are uh, exposed through uh, Microsoft Internet uh, information servers that haven't been patched correctly. Uh, so again, something that can be fixed uh, through upgrades. Um, but unfortunately, what we're seeing is a lot of the systems running are out of life, out of support from a security point of view. So it's not really possible to, to patch them. Um, and, and some of these vulnerabilities have been around for a long time. So it really um, beggars belief in some ways that uh, these haven't been, haven't been resolved. So I think this is, you know, this is something that's, it, it's worth digging into for anybody in the call. Um, it, you know, one of the first protocols really is to look at um, any uh, external facing applications, particularly web server applications um, that maybe are end of life uh, are not able to be patched. Um, and, and to upgrade those to, to the, a supported version. So then digging into cover holders, um, 
again, similar 25% scored uh, a C when it comes to encryption. So again, weak encryption here. Um, typical examples of this again is on web-based forms, um, not using uh, certificates or encryption certificates at all to collect uh, personal data. Um, or, or, or no encryption or weak encryption is the, the three sort of common things we, we have found. So again, these things can be easily resolved, um, but it does require focus um, from, from the firms in, in question. Um, moving on then from the encryption sort of element is the 25% gain of the population. Um, we identified a number of high risk security vulnerabilities. And I think in this particular uh, cohort of companies, and we identify issues in particular around Apache web services um, that, are, that are still running, um, but they're very, very old versions of, of Apache web services or very, very old versions of, of PHP. So I guess the takeaway from this is to, to do a review of your existing um, certificates, web encryption certificates, make sure they're all valid uh, within date. We've certainly seen some examples of companies that are certificates that are expired um, um, but also ensure that you're using uh, strong um, encryption ciphers on the service themselves um, and, and check the, the version numbers of all of the, the Apache or PHP version numbers to ensure that you're running uh, the, the most current version, the one that's, the one that's supported uh, from a security point of view. So carriers, um, Again, uh, similar themes here, 21% of the carriers uh, scored an E when it comes to network security, which is something we didn't really see so much um, in, in some of the other uh, populations. Um, and really this, you know, this again, this highlights uh, Apache web server in this particular case. Um, but we also seen a lot of database servers um, being exposed to the public internet um, and really you know, we, we don't look into the database to see what's in the database, but we can tell there's a particular database service being advertised to the public internet. Um, and this information is not only available to us um, as, you know, somebody that's just looking in from the pub, from a public side of a company, but also it's available to any of the bad actors that wants to also have a look. But, uh, you know, they're obviously going to go further and try and gain access to that database. Um, the fix here really is to ensure that any database servers that you're publishing on the internet um, are firewall correctly, and this really comes from weak firewall management. Um, all database servers should be restricted to VPN access, or if you need to uh, uh, sort of publish the database service itself, then that should be whitelisted um, to, the, to the companies that do require that access, not just public access. Um, you know, there's certainly identification that a lot of these database servers are running with a, an any any rule on a firewall, which allows anyone to, to gain access to that particular service to start you know, further probing and trying to exploit the, or uh, brute force the, the database itself. And again, 12% of the population uh, is still suffering from uh, high risk security vulnerabilities. Um, and this again, a lot of these things can be resolved quite quickly through good, strong uh, operational security. So moving on to the service providers then. So service providers, as I said, it was a, a new, new uh, category for us this year. And we included, you know, all of the sort of well-known service providers, you know, including exchanging in this. And as we all know, exchanging did have a, a, a breach. Um, and unfortunately, the, the data from uh, the service providers is, is not, not great. Um, it certainly shows a lack of um, security operations, strong security operations when it comes to their external digital footprints or their attack surface. I think the, the worrying thing for, the, for, for us on this is that it is exposing the whole market because these, these firms are, you know, at the center of the market. Every, every firm within the market is you know, reliant on them uh, completely. Um, so again, if this, this uh, particular service provider, um, you know, suffers some form of breach, then it could potentially could impact every firm within, within the market. Um, and what we're seeing is, you know, from the, I guess, the, uh, the bad actors that we uh, carry research against and follow um, and, and, you know, in the, the, the dark web and trying to understand what they're doing, who they're attacking at. And the ones that are attacking financial services are quite complex. Um, they're, you know, carrying out a lot of reconnaissance nowadays. They're not just going straight after one particular organization. They tend to carry reconnaissance around 
you know, who are the common service providers, who are the firms we're really trying to gain access to and the data within those firms. Um, and they're looking for the weak links really in, into those uh, particular uh, supply chains, I guess, or ecosystems. Um, so again, it's, it's an important one to, to try and get addressed. And I think, I, I guess I would encourage anyone on the call uh, working with any of these service providers, they're, they're well known, I'm not going to go through them all, but um, to open up discussions around, you know, how are they, how are they treating the data that's being passed to them on a, on a daily basis and, and what does their security look like and, and put in, you know, some form of, of continuous monitoring uh, to these service providers. And I think also, you know, the new operational regulation that's it's out now in terms of making sure that your supply chain is, is resilient and secure. Um, also comes into play here. So again, it's it's a imp really important point. But looking at some of the, the data, you know, 31% of service providers scored an E when it comes to, to network security, which is, is extremely disappointing. Um, a lot of them have very, very insecure weak uh, encryption ciphers. Um, you know, when we look at some of the ciphers, the, the ciphers have been around for a long time. They're very well known as weak ciphers. Um, and really this comes down to, I guess, I guess bad bill policy or bad configuration management really um, and really somebody's not not checking these things when, as often they, as they should. Um, they also per, scored very very poorly when it comes to uh, application security and a lot of this is is from misconfiguration of applications again back to the build. Um, you know there should be strong build documentation around any application, there should be strong DevOps around that um, and it certainly looks in this case anyway, in some of the service providers we looked at, that certainly isn't the case. Um, a lot of very basic things that have been left off the web applications themselves. So again, this, this highlights uh, an area that could, could be improved pretty quickly, um, um, but it does leave these firms open to exploit uh, through, through their application uh, applications they're currently publishing on the internet. Again, a large proportion of the population uh, scored a C when it came to DMARC. You know, DMARC is, uh, should be um, included in all DNS configuration now. It shouldn't be an option any longer, um, but it's still surprising to find firms still um, not using any form of authentication when it comes to their email. Um, and it's exposing, you know, exposing that firm, but also the, any firms that are working with and connected to those, those uh, particular service providers. Um, again, not surprising, a large proportion of the uh, service providers are using Office 365. So again, this highlights if there was an outage um, within some of these very, very large central service providers that would impact the whole, the whole industry within, within the London market. Um, and again, we identified a number of high risk uh, security vulnerabilities, 28% uh, of the population had high risk security vulnerabilities, which are uh, exploitable today um, could you know should have been fixed I guess they've been around for a long time there is uh, public known exploits uh, available for all of these uh, security vulnerabilities that we've identified so really it's a it's a it's, it's, it's a problem just waiting to happen really unfortunately nowadays so what can firms do generally to to improve um, you know the, these things that we've identified really you know, one of the one of the approaches is to implement a, 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 a framework, a cybersecurity framework, um, like, like NIST. And I'm not really talking about information security, like ISO 27001. It's more cybersecurity are the issues that we have we have identified. Um, so again, I would encourage all firms to look at NIST as a as a particular framework. Um, Cyber Essentials um, does get you some way there in the UK. Um, in terms of cybersecurity, but it's, it really doesn't touch on the, the breadth, I guess, of, of NIST. So again, NIST is a, is a very well-known uh, framework within the European financial services banking community. So it's again, it's a framework I would encourage you to, uh, to take a look at. It's also really important to develop a, an understanding of your network and its footprint. You know, as part of our exercise, we go through and we discover um, a firm's uh, digital footprint and uh, who they're connected to, who are those common service providers, where are the, the resilience uh, challenges within that ecosystem. And this is something that you, know, you should be done on a regular basis to identify um, who, who are our third parties, who are they working with, who are their fourth parties, um, how are we connected, what are the, what's the information we're exchanging, 
uh, between these organizations and how is that information secured and how are those parties securing the data while it's in situ or you know uh, in storage with while it's in their hands um again policies you know policy management is important but it's it's not unfortunately it's not the, you know it's not the end of the, the game um we see a lot of examples of firms that have developed very very good policy but it just hasn't been implemented unfortunately on the ground when we uh, and the data sort of burrs that out um endpoints again with people working from home nowadays you know we see a lot of examples of uh, weak security when it comes to people connecting from their home PCs now. Um, and again, you know, in the same way they can connect to the firm to carry out their, their day job. And this, we can also identify those endpoints and identify the weaknesses within those, those computers. Um, and our data shows that these, these uh, devices are, you know, some of them are infected with malware. I'm not talking particularly about the insurance survey, but typical things we find are a lot of the endpoints are infected with malware. Um, and they're they're distributing that malware they're um, around around other uh, machines within their com computers within the firm. Um, again, certificate management around encryption. This is a very basic thing. You know, there should be some record of uh, all of the certificates you're using to secure your applications. Unfortunately, with certificates, they're signed up for on a you know probably typical three, five, ten year type basis, and they tend to get forgotten about. And you don't really know they've expired until somebody you know tells you they're expired because they've got a large red warning sign coming up from google or their browser telling them that the site is not secure um or worse still that somebody has managed to compromise the data that's been you know lifted or pushed in through the website because there's no no level of encryption there and they're prone to you know some form of man in the middle attack um, so these are just some of the things, you know, we've, we've highlighted these again in the report itself. Um, it's worth taking a, a look through. Um, I'm more than happy to, you know, to, to speak to anyone offline after this um, to go through these in a lot more detail and look at the results from your particular firm um, and, and make some recommendations around that. So I'll hand back, with that I'll hand back to Richard. Thank you, Darren. It's very good. Um, so a couple of questions come in, which we'll go through. Um, first one is about shared services. So if we're concerned about the security of third parties that we use, like the shared services companies in the London market, what can we do about it? Yeah, so as I touched on, the first thing is to try and identify the, the risk there. And, you know, um, customers of risk exchange would use risk exchange to carry out uh, an initial discovery exercise against those third parties and set them up what we refer to as a monitor um, account. Um, but that will tell them uh, the, the, the types of issues, if any, that that particular service provider, provider has. Um, the next step really with them, once you've identified is to open up you know, that discussion. Um, we certainly wouldn't recommend using the data that Risk Exchange provides to you know, some form of, of uh, stick. Um, it's, 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 it's better to, you know, to collaborate with those service providers and work with them to address the issues. All of the data that you discover or risk exchange discovers and um, presents to you is also available to that service provider. Um, they just need to join onto your account. So again, that the information is there. And I would suggest that you, you know, build a strong, you know, strong relationship with them and, and collaborate on, on any particular issues you're finding. Okay, good. Um, the other one is, does risk exchange keep a historic record of cyber schools for us to evidence to a regulator? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the data that you see on a, on a daily basis um, is, is the current data because the data is updated every day, every 24 hours, um, or it can be updated every 24 hours. Um, so that's the most current set of data. But if you wish to look back further than that, we, we hold data up to three years. Um, so you're able to, uh, you know, look back on data if that's a requirement to look back on data, you know, over the last three years and maybe do some comparisons in terms of how your perf performance has improved um, or your third parties have improved. Um, but again, it's also useful to, uh, to benchmark your organization against other types of companies or other companies of a similar size. So again, we use this data to provide benchmark data uh, to, to our customers. Great, okay, well that's it for questions. So uh, yeah, the benchmark bit is key here. Um, 
we've got the report from last year and this year. So you'll be getting the report from me for this year. Um, last year's report is available as well if you want that as a comparison. And we give you the summary uh, cyber score for your company as well. So we give you some useful comparison benchmark data. Um, we we'll also make the offer of a, of a trial access to the platform for attendees and a consultation with us to go through uh, the platform and the results for your organization, and what you can do about it to uh, improve your cyber security posture. So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for your time. Um, and uh, you'll get the information through from myself and uh, we'll leave it there for today. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you.